Hi. This instructional video is an extension on the areas and perimeters of a regular polygon. And last time we talked about finding the area and the perimeter of the pentagon. And my students were given a little test, a little formative assessment to see how far they have gone with this concept. And one of the questions they were given was the area of a regular heptagon. And guess what? They got stuck. And definitely when they got to things like 11-sided polygon, they were really stuck. So, do you think you can find out what the solution for this guy is? It says find the area of a regular heptagon with a side of 3 centimeters. Go ahead, why don't you try that? Heptagon, as you know, refers to 7-sided polygon. And since it's a regular, uh, the way I like to illustrate it is to draw a circle. That will help me to inscribe in it somewhat symmetrical at least. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Hey, that's pretty close. And let's say the center of the circle, which is going to also be the centroid, is right there. And the last time we found the area and perimeter, we have to cut out a triangle. And just, like, oh boy, I missed that one pretty bad. But anyway, that is going to be an isosceles. And it says, an heptagon with a side of three centimeters. That means this little segment right there is going to be a three centimeters. So now based on that, how do you find the area? And we have four choices, A, B, C, D. <laughs> Statistically, I'll just choose C. But something's weird, that's way off. So that cannot be right. Test taking strategy, right? And these two are very similar. So it must be either the B or the D. All right, so which one is it? Here's what I do. First, I determine what is the angle of that arc right there. So out of 360 degrees, it's a heptagon, so divide that by seven. And it's not gonna be a nice number like before. This is gonna be approximately, let's see. Use a calculator here. We got 360 divided by seven sides. We got 51.428, blah, 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 like that. So it's gonna be about, let's just get an estimate, 51.4, let's just say. But we don't want the whole triangle, I just want half of it, because I know I'm gonna use some trig identities to find the missing side. So that means the half of that is gonna be half of 51.4, so divide that by two, I get 25.714, something like that. Okay, so that right there is going to be 25.71, let's just say. So now here's my little right triangle from that isosceles, which is one of the seven triangles that make up that heptagon. So here's what I have. And if that side right there, that's going to be the base of this triangle, the full length is 3, then this must be 1.5 centimeters. And the angle I have is going to be 25.714, something like that. All right? So here's what we got. So we know we're going to use a trigger identity. The question is, how do you decide which ratio to use? Is it sine, cosine, tangent? Which one? Well, what we're looking for is the area of the entire thing. And we're looking for the area of that one isosceles triangle. Once we find that, we're going to multiply that by 7. So what we need to find is the area of that one triangle. We need the base and the height to find the area. Well, guess what? We are given the base. See? Right there. The whole base is 3 right there. That's given. All we need to find is the height or the apothem here. All we need is the height. So how do you find that? Which trig identity would help us find that? So I want to find from this angle adjacent. I have the op opposite. I have the opposite and I need the adjacent. 
And the one that helps us to get that is the tangent of a given angle. The tangent is the opposite, ratio of opposite and adjacent. So, here's what I do. The tangent of the given angle here is 25.714. So let's just put down for now 25.714. And the tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite. So from this point of reference right there, opposite is 1.5. over adjacent. Now let's just label this adjacent as B because I like Pythagorean theorem. So let's just call that B. And we have to solve for that B. So to do that, we're going to multiply to both sides of this equation by that B. When I do, the B and B on the right side of the equation cancels out, but B on the left side becomes B times tangent of 25.714 degrees is equal to 1.5. I still need to solve for B. So to do that, let me just raise this up. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation finally by that tangent. For some of you who are very familiar with the trig identities, I know I'm taking a scenic route, but I have to show this step by step to make sense for those who are in primer geometry course. So here, on the top and the bottom, they simplify to a 1, so that remains a B. And on the right, it's a little difficult. Thank goodness we're going to have a calculator to use. But what you need to do is now evaluate the quotient of 1.5 divided by the tangent of 25.714 degrees, and that will give us the side. You know what? I'm going to keep my side B in this quotient form for now. And now I'm going to go back and use the area of a triangle formula. And so... Here it comes again. Here comes another sheet of paper. So now I'm going to go area is equal to 1 half base times height. So that's 1 half times the base of a triangle. The full base of that one triangle is 3. So that base is 3 centimeters. And the height, which was the apothem here, the height was found to be in a quotient form of 1.5. over tangent of that angle, which is estimated, 25.714. There. Here I have half of 3, which is 1.5, times that numerator 1.5 equals 2.25. So that's 2.25 divided by that tangent of estimated angle of 25.714. Now I keep mentioning estimated because I do not want to use the rounded number. I want to use this one right here. 25.714 fully extended. That will give me the closest possible answer to the choices. I think it's going to be between B and D. So how do I go back and get that answer? Well remember that came from right here. 360 divided by 7 which was 51.4, but the tangent was found on the base of, or found it on the half of that. So in fact, that is not one-seventh of the entire triangle, but it's one-fourteenth, because it's half of that seventh. So in fact, if I want to get that number back, the 25.714, what I want to do is, I want to go 360 divided by 14. Now I'm going to punch this in. I'm going to take that 2.25 divided by tangent of, and I'm going to open parentheses, and now I'm going to find the quotient of 360 divided by, not 7, but 14. See if that makes sense to you. And my answer becomes 4.671 something like that. 4.672 something like that. And I say something like that because that's just one triangle. And how many are there? Heptagon has 7. So now I'm going to take that times a 7. So I'm going to take that answer in an extended form times 7. And that gives me approximately 32.705212, something like that. And what answer choice gives me the closest to 32.7, something like that, centimeter square is D. Yeah! So it's important not to round off 
your quotients all the way to the end. That's when you do it. And that's the way many of the publishers who generate the tests will have their answers, choices. Okay? Now, if you think you got that for the next instructional video, why don't you try find the area of a regular 11 gone. A polygon with 11 sides, with each side is now being 5 centimeter. Come on, try it!